So now let's talk about the CRH stimulation test and the high dexamethasone test. It begins with the high cortisol levels which were found randomly on a screening test or from a person who had tranquil obesity and really wanted to know what's wrong. Now, what happens is we administer a low dose dexamethasone and try to see its effect on the cortisol levels. Normally, it should suppress the cortisol level, but if it does not, that means something is really wrong. So we move on to check the serum ACTH levels because this can tell us where the excess cortisol is coming from. Now, if the ACTH levels come back to be low, that means this patient has an elevated cortisol and a low ACTH, or despite a low ACTH. That means the cortisol is coming from either an exogenous source or the adrenals. So this indicates an exogenous glucocorticoid use or an adrenal mass. Now you could have just asked the person if he was taking glucocorticosteroids and if he says yes, then all this wasn't really necessary. But if he says no, I wasn't taking anything, then you should do an MRI and confirm the mass in the adrenals. The next thing that can happen is that the ACTH levels come back super high, thousands or hundreds. And now you have someone whose cortisol is high and so is the ACTH. So it cannot be adrenal because if it were adrenal cortisol, then the ACTH would have been suppressed. So now this ACTH is being released from either the pituitary or from some random place. We have to figure out which one. And for that, we do the high dose dexamethasone test and or the CRH stimulation test. And how do you do those? Let's see. So the dexamethasone super high dose test, how does that work? Well, you infuse the patient with an eight milligram super high dose of cortisol from outside and you see the ACTH levels. If the ACTH levels continue to be super high and they do not respond even 1% to the dexamethasone, that means you know for sure that it's being secreted from an ectopic source, either a lung or bronchioles. And if it does suppress, if it does get suppressed a little bit, then you can be sure that it's coming from a pituitary source. Because even though it has an adenoma, it will still retain a little bit feedback quality and a little bit ACTH will end up being suppressed when you put so much of high dose dexamethasone from outside. But what if you still don't trust this and you feel like maybe my, my pituitary is a douchebag and doesn't want to retain at a feedback quality at all? That's when you do the CRH stimulation test to sort of confirm this. Now the CRH stimulation works like this. You inject the patient with artificial CRH and then you measure the ACTH levels at different intervals. Now, in a normal person, the CRH stimulation will lead to a 400% increase in ACTH. But in these two cases, you already have an excessive amount of ACTH being produced. So what will the CRH stimulation do here? Now, if the ACTH levels are being produced, I mean the increased ACTH levels are being produced by the ectopic source, like the lung or bronchioles, then the CRH stimulation will not really increase the ACTH too much. Because this ACTH from this ectopic source is already suppressing the pituitary ACTH. So when the CRH tries to stimulate the pituitary ACTH, the increase is not too much because it's being suppressed. However, if the pituitary is the one releasing the ACTH and you stimulate it furthermore from CRH, then the ACTH increase will be a lot, like 30% more 30% more cortisol, and you will see a significant increase in ACTH levels. They will just speak up. That's like adding Christmas to a birthday party. And that's how you can tell the difference between pituitary source and ectopic source. In one, the ACTH levels will not really increase, and in the other one, they will shoot up. So this is how you can differentiate between the different causes of Cushing syndrome. And I really hope this was useful, guys. Thank you so much for watching.